Hi, this is Natalie Callback, and I'm here with Joe Roteller, my good old friend Joe Roteller. Oh, um, she always starts these interviews with old friends. <laughs> did that last year too. Which means that just that we have been friends for a long time. And Joe Roteller is again part of Creative Jumpstart 2020. I'm super stoked. Joe, how many times have you been part of Creative Jumpstart? Oh my God. Could it be like six? I'd have to go look. It's a long time. I'm sure it's like... Because I think every time when someone else backs out and you go, who's the last person on the list? Joe Rotella, I'll call him. I'm pretty sure. That's absolutely not true, actually. But it is true every year when you ask me, I say, are you sure? <laughs> That's true. And I'm very sure. So I'm super stoked to have Joe Rotella back. And for everyone who doesn't know um, Joe... It's very sad that you don't, but um, Joe, can you introduce yourself and let us know who you are, where you are, what you do? So I'm Joe Rotella and I live in Columbus, Ohio, and I have a real job and I'm <laughs> chief marketing officer of a software company, but I love making stuff. So sometimes I struggle, Natalie's coached me because I say, you know, I don't think I'm an artist, maybe more of a crafter or a maker. But I love making things, building things. I love teaching folks. I love nerdy crafts. I love folks like Nat, who we laugh all the time. And I abused. She was teaching a class once. And I actually interrupted her and ran in the room with food. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. He's very caring. And he likes to dress up. I do. I do. I spent on a Friday night. I can really have a good time. But... <laughs> We're not talking about that on this video. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, Joe, um, I know you do a lot of uh, really, really funky and cool projects that involve a lot of, and we will get to that a little bit later too, involve a lot of materials and tools that are maybe unusual um, for the average crafter and artist maybe. Um, but can you tell us like a little bit, what is it, what you usually do? It's more assemblage oftentimes, right? I like, yeah, I don't do, I don't really do flat. Mm -hmm. I like 3D stuff. I love stuff you can interact with, especially if it has stuff that moves or turns. I love stuff that lights up. Um, I can't draw anything. So drawing is out. I can stay, stamp and paint, but I do love building and I love going to flea markets and I own way too much junk because I see stuff. I look at a table and I, it's like I close my eyes and think, oh, I could make something out of this. And then I buy it and bring it home. And then six months later, I look at it and think, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> so I need to start a journal because I can't remember this stuff. Yeah, and I know. It looks like craft hoarders. And then your studio, look how beautiful your studio is. There's a little bit of stuff on that one table. If that were my house, there would even be stuff on the chair where you sit. Any, if it's flat, it can hold supplies. Well, there's a there's a whole basement underneath, so. <laughs> Just I can't saying. show you my basement because then we get into the whole dress up thing again. <laughs> and now we're really... <laughs> so um, yeah, I know that you made a lot of things that were moving parts. Is that something that you liked as a kid too? Did you like build like? airplanes and and stuff yeah, like I, you know it's funny you ask i didn't build anything but i used to get in trouble all the time because i took stuff apart <laughs> like if my parents were at work i'd find like a radio or a clock <laughs> and i was so stupid you know i took apart a radio once i never even unplugged it from the electric oh my so God. i constantly took stuff apart i was an awful child <laughs> no yeah, you weren't just remember, curious i've never seen those wine bottles that have like raffia around yeah. and the wine bottle and they used to put the colored candle in and yes. it would drip. You know, my sister had one and I was not allowed one because I was way too young. So while my mom was at work, I held crayons to the light bulbs in her reading. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble. That's and so you know, funny. Another time, wait, I'll tell you another story. I stole the flares out of my mom and dad's truck and car and all the neighbors cars that were unlocked and i went to our backyard and i piled up all the flares and i put a coffee can and i filled it with sand because someone told me if you heated sand it made a diamond that's where diamonds <laughs> came from. no i never thought of this story it's been so long and i lit all the flares at once and my mom saw it from the kitchen window because there was this 
massive solar flare out in the garage in the backyard. Oh my god! And when they came and yelled at me, I said, "Well, I'm making you a big diamond. It's going to be as big <laughs> as the coffee can." I still got beat. Oh my god, did I get beat? But yeah, I was always. I was bad. I was an awful kid. No, that's not awful. You were you were curious and you wanted to explore things and do things. Oh, I was very curious and explorative and taking things apart. And I never seemed to get them back together, though. <laughs> that's so funny. You wanted to make diamonds. How cute is that? With flares. How <laughs> dangerous was this? No, but how like... smart that you were even thinking about it. Yeah. Let's put all this highly flammable shit together with a coffee can. That's so funny. Speaking of which, so um, Creative Jumpstart every year has a theme, which I sent out to you guys and then asked you to do a short video for it. Um, this year's theme is um, superpower, your artistic superpower. Joe, what is your artistic superpower? Well, we're in my office now, but I can show you my superpower you want to see. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Holy cow, what just did happen, Joe? Well, you know, my superpower is a little bit of tools, a little bit of tech, and some magic. So I got my magic wand. Wow. And I transported you into my studio. That's amazing. So your artistic superpower, you also made the hat, right? The hat is made out of duct tape. The whole hat is out of duct tape. Get out. It's true. There's nothing solid in this hat. Wow. And feathers from a wild party. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> and even the wand. I made the wand. The wand has a crystal at the end that makes its powers. That's so cool. So your artistic superpower, you said a little bit of tech, a little bit of... Tools and a little bit of magic. Ooh. What's there? What's like the tools like and the tech that you like to use? So, tool wise, well, I have to take these off because it's so dark. I can't <laughs> see you. Magic. Yes. Actually, these filter out anybody who's not creative. So, I see a huge bright light where you are. <laughs> And then that guy who keeps looking in the window behind you, I hardly see him at all, but you are fabulously bright. So let me take off my, these are so cool too. They're super decorated. They are cool. Is that something that you found on one of your flea market purchases? This was from an artist up in Salem, Massachusetts, and he solders all these metal parts onto the side of goggles. Cool. And I really like supporting people who make stuff. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I have to buy these. Very cool. And, but the hat, I made the hat. So I got my cape. <laughs> so I love things. I don't know. I love mechanical things. So like I use software. I typically use something called Make the Cut. And it makes SVG or vector graphics. And it's cheap and it's easy to use. It's not as complicated as Adobe Illustrator because it only is worried about lines because when you're dealing with a cutting machine like the brother scan and cut or a laser, all you care about is lines, shading and all this other stuff doesn't matter. So I use that software. That's my bit of tech. And I drive the laser cutter. I let you see the laser cutter at the idea space and the laser cutter cuts anything organic. Mm -hmm. So wood, leather, uh, fabric, um, acrylic. I can cut acrylic with it. Um, it'll engrave, it'll cut. So sometimes I use the big laser cutter. It's incredibly precise, which I love precise. So if I'm cutting real gears that are going to work, the laser cutter's perfect. Um, all the way to my cutting machines at home, like the Brother Scan and Cut. So I love machines. I love tools. Proxon tools. You know, I have my little table saw we've used in the past and my little drill press and hand tools. The Idea Foundry has huge tools. So I take and I tend to draw every project in Make the Cut so I can picture it. Then I figure out what tools I want to play with and off I go. And the magic is sometimes it works. Sometimes this <laughs> magic doesn't seem to work because I've made projects where I'm halfway done or through and think, 
oh, this is awful. What, what happened here? <laughs> Well, so, don't we all have that problem sometimes, right? You know, sometimes the wand works, sometimes the wand doesn't work. <laughs> so, Joe, when when we think about like an artistic or crafty superpower, and I a couple of my of our other artists for Creative Jumps Out actually had a hard time thinking about it, and I think part of it is Sometimes it's hard to define. You were pretty sure you know what your artistic superpower is, but I think it's also hard for us sometimes to talk about ourselves and say, oh, this is special about what I do. Um, what's your real life, like your normal life superpower? Is it the same or is it a different one? Oh my gosh. You know, I really love people. And I love speaking. So for my real job, I do a lot of speaking and educating all over the world. A lot of presentations. You know, as a marketing person, I'm up in front of groups all the time. And I think for me, really, if I think about it, crafting and making, it's the people part. Because even I'm rarely making stuff by myself. My partner's in there helping or friends come over to the house. Uh, our friends we met are people who work at the Idea Foundry, and I go say, like, what are you making over there? <laughs> what tool is that? And they're like, oh, what are you using? And you help each other and you collaborate. So I think in real life, and maybe even for the crafting stuff, it's the whole people collaborating, working together. You know, like I would love, and any of the jumps, jump, the jumpers, I always get who's who. I get it confused. But, you know, if a jumper wrote me and said, look, I have an idea for a project. I need an acrylic or a wood substrate that's a box or the lid or this or that. How about you? Could you make that? And then I'll decorate it with stamps or paint or whatever it is they want to do. Those are the best projects. Mm -hmm. When you, two people come together and you just kind of wing it like that. I love that. Yeah, so I, I think, think collaborations are pretty amazing. But it's also true that you are a very, very good people person. Like you're just, I mean, you're just charming and funny and it's awesome and, and wonderful to hang around with you. And, and you, you make me hurt me on interview line like this. People are going to know. <laughs> you always make me laugh too. But um, that's true. That's definitely a superpower that you have is bringing people together, talking with people, making people feel safe and valued, which I think that's an incredible superpower. And then you're also incredibly uh, creative too, as we will see in the video for Creative Jumpstart. I can't wait for you guys to see it. And Joe's talking a lot about the Idea Foundry, which um, he's going he's gonna to take us on a tour a little bit in his video. But can you tell us real short what the Idea Foundry actually is? It's a makerspace, and here in Columbus, Ohio, it's the largest makerspace in the United States. It's a square block, <laughs> and it's three stories. And so it has huge wood shops, welding shops, glass shops, jewelry shops, laser cutters. Um, I, uh, oh, we have a forge. You can actually go and make steel swords and, wow. and knives and stuff. And basically, you go and you can take two classes and anything to become a member, I pay a membership fee that's under $100 a month, and I have 24-7 access to the whole building and every piece of equipment. Wow. So it can be 3 in the morning, and I'm like, hey, let's go use the laser cutter. So it's, I love it. And you meet the coolest folks there. And every age, I mean, I've seen 8- and 10-year-olds in the shop, as, and I know there's a guy there in his 90s who scroll saws every day. Huh. So it's an amazing place where people come together and make. That sounds like a really, really good place. And I can totally see you why you're going there because you like big tools too. I like big tools. <laughs> Stop it. Some people find that intimidating. Like some people find it intimidating to work with like power tools or, you know, uh, a huge laser cutter as the one that we will show in the video. Um, just He's just showing it, guys. The project is not making it with it. But what do you tell people that are like maybe, you know, intimidated of using also something that's 
more technical, like the cutter machine or, you know, the brother or whatever? You know, I would say, first of all, safety is very important. Mm -hmm. So you want to be sure if you walk into that maker space before you use a tool, you know how to use it safety and safely. And for, you know, and many times that's, you want, you know, goggles, if we're cutting stuff, you know, you can't, now I can't see with these goggles on, this would be a bad idea, but you know, you want to make sure stuff isn't going to fly around. You don't have loose sleeves. And once you get the safety concerns nailed and you know how to handle the tool safely, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. If we say we're doing it safe, okay, you cut a piece of wood and you screwed it up. You go get another, mm -hmm. you know, you laser cut something and it didn't come out right. Okay. You go buy another substrate and cut it again. Mm -hmm. And wood and plastic is cheap. I make a ton of stuff from scraps. So I don't really think, I think my fear approaching a tool is how do I use this and not lose a finger? And right. I still have a ball. But once I've got that down pat, you know, even the cutting machine and software, people are like, oh, I bought an electronic cutting machine and I've never taken it out of the box. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. What's the worst that can happen? You cut all the way through the mat. Mats are 20 bucks. Yeah. You work a blade. They're 10 bucks. I mean, you don't want to do it all the time, of course. And software, what's the worst? You're clicking. You're not launching missiles or anything. So you just <laughs> click. Okay, I made a circle. Great. I didn't want that circle. Okay, delete. You know, so... And if you're afraid, get somebody else to show you how. Right. So, even you know, for all the best part, one of the best, there's lots of cool things about Creative Jumpstart. And Natalie should be so proud of what she built into this worldwide mm -hmm. activity. But the forum is cool because people watch the videos and they comment. They ask questions. Well, if you get on there and you say, Joe, that software is amazing. I'd love to see it. If we can set up a time that works for both of us, I'll spend a half hour with you over mm -hmm. the web and show it to you. What the, Ask, what's the worst any of these artists can do? They can say no, and then you move on. So the same with a tool you don't know. If you see somebody in there using it, go over and say, you know, how do you, how do, you do that? What mm -hmm. does that do? Can I show you, can you show me how? Um, my closest friends are people I met at the Idea Foundry because I walked over to their table and said, wow, what you're doing is so cool. How does that work? And they could be mean and say, you know, I don't show people or they're not friendly. Well, then you move on. Right. But you meet the neatest people. And I'm not embarrassed to tell folks when I don't have a clue. I mean, I think I've, I've learned from Natalie when she goes and teaches something. I have no problem saying, oh, my God, I didn't know how that worked. Using your stamp line, your art foamies. They're so cool. And I remember you saying, you know, you don't need to put a ton of paint. Don't press so hard so yeah. it squishes out and all this stuff. Don't be embarrassed to say you don't have a clue. Don't pretend because you feel you have to to be, you know, the same as everybody else. Be honest. Be authentic. Yeah, I think that's like a big problem in our world anyway, right? Because we see all these like perfect uh, things on Facebook, on Instagram, all kinds of social media. And it, it makes you intimidated about things you should, you think you should know. Yep, yep. Right? And so you're, I was actually reminded of that in a very different way. But when my godson visited me um, two years ago, uh, you know, he's a teenager and he came to New York. And we had many, many visitors uh, here when you're close to New York. Of course, people tend to come more often to you probably <laughs> when to other places. We say, America, to New York, I can stay at your place, you know. But um, what I really, really enjoyed going with him, like going into the city with him was this like uh, unfiltered joy of yes. seeing the things that he, of course, had seen in movies and everything like a million times, you know, and just like embracing all of it and being excited. And I thought... Oh my God, so true. We often put ourselves, we restrain ourselves from um, experiencing that because it's weird or what could other people think about it? And I think in art, we do the same thing. When we explore things, we have these like pictures of how it should look like or what, what we should know about it or, right? So it's yeah. kind of, you take a, you take your joy of exploring things and, even failing uh, away. And I think 
like think if, if if Natalie, if you would say, Joe, let's go to a museum, an art museum together. I could either approach that and be like, oh my God, I have no art training. Right. I went, I went to an engineering school. Natalie's an artist. And, you know, I could see one story you play out. We go stand in front of pieces and Natalie's like, wow, look at the <laughs> composition and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, yes, I totally see it right there. <laughs> But that's all a bunch of crap. Instead, it'd be better for me to take advantage of that moment and Natalie's wonderful personality and and, and authenticity to say, you know, you know, I Natalie, don't know I don't shit what the hell that is. Like, <laughs> why is that so special? And I think you would be authentic and say, I don't like it either. Or you'd say, well, let me explain. Right. But there would be no condescending attitude. Well, those are the people you want to surround yourself exactly, with. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I love with Creative Jumpstart. I feel every year when I turn in a project. Wow, these all these other artists are real rock stars, and you have to put that away and think. You know, if there's one person who can who makes what I made or something similar or uses the technique, mission accomplished. It's not a competition. You don't have to have the best one out of the whole series. And some people will like what you do. Some people will just skip it. But you put it out there, and as long as you had fun doing it, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, it's the, there's something true about comparison is the thief of joy, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I never heard that. Uh, yeah, I don't know who said it, someone very smart, uh, I forgot. But um, yeah, I think it's so true. And I actually just heard a podcast, I think it's called The Happiness Lab. And um, it was about why sometimes you see um, they did a, like a research and why at Olympics you oftentimes see the people that got the silver medal in a short glimpse not being super happy versus, of course, the person who gets gold is like super happy. But yeah. then the person who gets bronze is happier than the person who got the silver medal. And you're like... Why is that? Shouldn't be the silver medal person be happier than the guy who got the bronze or the woman who got the bronze medal, right? And it was about comparison. It's all about comparison because you're like, I should have, I could have gotten gold and no, okay. I didn't, I get silver. So I'm a little bit, I'm happy, but I'm still disappointed versus the person who got bronze is I could have gotten nothing, but I got bronze. Yeah, 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 that's so cool. And I thought that was so interesting. And I think it's really true that we oftentimes uh, take away that joy because we compare ourselves to other people. And um, I think the, the beauty of um, a, an art class and sharing is you need to tell yourself it doesn't, don't compare your, yourself to anyone else. Just embrace yeah. it and um and have fun and go with it and fun that's that's you know for some people art is therapeutic i think for me art has a social component i do it with friends friends come over to the house and sometimes they'll say something and i'll be like oh you know you want to make a certain thing well let i know how let's all make it together why yes. don't you make one and and i love it when somebody says oh i i, I don't know i don't know how to do that i don't know how to make stuff well now guess what you're gonna try right yeah now. right Right. Well, what if it doesn't turn out? We'll throw it away. Yes. Or donate it to the Goodwill or bring it to a senior center for someone who loves it. Right. Who cares? Or turn it into something else. Take it apart and redo it. Paint. You paint over it. Do it again, you know. And who knows what you, I mean, look at this. I love this. This is duct tape. This is so this is fun. Completely. This Head is to really duct fun. tape and jewelry from garage sales and a feather duster, I think. This I is mean, so fun. But who would think you could make something out of duct tape? I know, right? I think but this is why I have so much crap from flea markets because I see all this stuff and think, oh, ooh, ooh, potential. Ooh, ooh. Well, we talked about that before, actually, and I hold you still accountable for that. And I think it is one in our interviews that you told me before that you or our listeners that you buy things and then you forget what your initial idea was. Mm -hmm. And I told you, you should do an Instagram account for that and you should take a oh, yes. photo yeah. and then write down what your idea is. And it That's will be a great idea again <laughs> for the second time. And then you get, I know I keep coming up and I'm sure in the comments, you will even read more ideas and then you could go back. Win-win situation for everyone because I want to see the crap you're buying. Yeah. 
you know, that means, okay, so you have to follow me on Instagram because I think I have six followers right now. I'm not sure. You yeah, have you also follow. have only, uh, well, I'm one of them and you also only have like six photos, I think. Oh, look, there's the cat. The cat has joined the interview. <laughs> This is Bobby Pretzel, my friends. Actually, I summoned the cat. You did? <laughs> Your magic wand. <laughs> well, I'm concerned about the guy who keeps walking in front of the window. So the cat now will be watching. Go I'm on. glad. I'm glad. So, Joe, what's the most creative tool that you have used in any of your craft and artwork? Wow. Like unusual if or, you know, like something that you were that people would be like, whoa, really? You know, the latest thing I've used, because it changes all the time, but I just started to use a sandblasting cabinet. And I show it, I think, in the Idea Foundry. And it's typically used to take rust off of metal parts before you weld it. But if you put a stencil, like, over a rock, you can sandblast it and it etches it. That's cool. Or you can do wood, or you could do glass, or you could do acrylic. So now I keep finding all this stuff thinking, oh, I'm going to cut a vinyl stencil, put it over it, and stick it in the sandblasting cabinet. <laughs> so I love that. That's a new thing. That's probably a fad. I mean, after I sandblast everything I can find, then I'll be done with that. <laughs> I love the laser because the laser is so precise. And I love it can cut tiny little things. I love the laser. Um I love all my Proxon tools. I mean, it's hard to pick one because, you know, every tool, some days you're in the mood for one tool, some days you're in the mood for another tool. You just never know. Did you learn something? So you teach a lot. You also teach at this like crazy um, Gen Con and you have like, I don't know, how many people are like taking a class? So this, this summer I taught 42 workshops over three days to 1,100 people at the largest gaming convention in the world. That's crazy. That's... Yeah, so it looks like stuff like, hold on. Yes. My my wand doesn't work short distance, so I had to actually pick this up. It's better at long distance. <laughs> but, like, here is a Doctor Who clock we did at Gen Con. And the cool part, you'll never see it, but it was signed by one of the doctors. He came to class. That's so cool. So Peter Davidson actually signed the clock. So this is an example of a nerdy craft. That's and I think so probably cool. craft more than art, but I don't know. I so don't know people you... people sign up for these classes. Are these in the mostly men or women or is it mixed? Oh my god, no. It is every age, it is every gender, even non binary, um, from all over the world. And different levels of ability. Uh physical ability I've had quadriplegics come to classes wow. I've had uh, kids on the autistic spectrum um, a gaming convention is is people just coming together to have fun they're playing games and in this case they there's a whole track where they're making nerdy things and I'm proud to say like this year it was close to 20 of my workshops sold out within 11 minutes of registration opening that's crazy. It's like Big Bang Theory when that, like, when Comic Con opens and they're online, like, click, 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 click trying to register. That's just what it's like. Nice, nice. I'm a rock star. But you know, stuff. That crowd wants to make functional things, nerdy things, fandom things. So if you were doing watercolors of flowers and stuff, probably not going to go. You stick a fairy in it, or a gnome, or a little <laughs> mushroom house. Whew, that's going to go. <laughs> And if it's got a TARDIS, you know, that's Doctor Who's time-traveling machine is the TARDIS. If it's got a TARDIS on it, those Whovians, they're right there. <laughs> that's so funny. We made this wand at Gen Con. That's so cool. It's just a wire that's then coated with thermoplastic, which is a plastic that's hard when it's cool. When you heat it with a heat gun, it becomes soft like Play-Doh. Put it there, let go, let it cool. It, it only takes seconds to cool. When it's hot, it'll you can embed gems in it and stuff. Huh. And now we have a magic wand. Wow. That's so cool. I mean, the creative part is also thinking about how can I do that with, um, in a way to so many people that it looks good and what they expected, but it's also feasible to teach in a short amount of time with not 100 million tools. That's the challenge. I mean, right. we have... 
we only have 30 minutes between each class. So we have to get you out and get a new group in. As it is, we take a trailer full of supplies to Indianapolis because at a gaming convention, I can't tell you bring scissors, bring a pen. Mm. We supply every single thing you need from a placemat and a handy wipe to a toothpick, to the glue, to the heat guns, to the heat presses, to cutting machines. And I have to have enough for 1,200 people. Yeah, and you're an so, org organizational wonder too in all you do. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how you do all that. Um, this is so freaking amazing. That's a superpower too, yeah. right there. We start, we start in January to get ready for August. Yeah, yeah, I can, and even that amazes me still. <laughs> you know, like that time. And you know, it's so funny because sometimes I've talked with manufacturers in the past. And they're like, well, we want somebody who does a blog post or a project at least once a month or maybe twice a month. You know what I'm thinking? And they're like, we looked at your blog and you don't have, you know, 24 a year. And it's like, because I have 42 in three days. I mean, I can't. <laughs> What can I say? You know, it's weird. So it's definitely kind of like up and down. And a lot of convent gaming conventions all over the country have asked if we'd come and teach there. My tribe my helpers and I, um, but it's logistics. You know, I can't drive a trailer all the way to Seattle right. to an event. You know, it's a 25 foot truck of supplies that yeah. live in a house, garage everywhere. It's a mess. That's crazy. But it's I'm, fun. You know, if you're in Columbus, Ohio, anybody just call and say, Hey, can I come over? Who knows what we could make? Go through the garage, pick something out. Let's go. Oh, uh, one day I'm coming, baby. You will see. Anytime, but it's not as neat. Look at how beautiful your studio is. Again, I have a basement. Yeah, we don't <laughs> see that. So I should challenge you, just like the Instagram account, we should have a video tour of your basement. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little non-committal, Nat. That was a little vague. Maybe. So, Joe, what is... Um... What did you learn? Did you learn something for yourself or your other career from creating and teaching creative workshops? I think they kind of bounce back and forth. I think when you're teaching a creative workshop, you can still have fun and it could be a blast, but I, I learned you're best if you're still professional. Mm -hmm. I expect the teachers to arrive on time, to prepare that room, to be dressed appropriately, and to be organized. So when I give a presentation at work, you really think about the flow. And I think that's the same when you teach creative classes. And what I learned from creative the other way, you know, it makes me crazy when you read instructions or it's a live class and they're like, okay, so everybody, you're going to paint this gold. So everybody paint, oh, before you paint it gold, you're supposed to paint it black first. And I'm like, okay, well, I just started the gold already. What are you talking? So... Have you ever seen anything like that, Natalie, where the instructions after you get a certain point tell you this was supposed to be done first? Not in no. the not in um, not in writing, I think so often. I've definitely oh, been not in writing, because hopefully they've checked. Right. But I, I'm I'm probably did that before in my teaching too, where you're like, Oh, I just forgot that one part. Um, so I I get frustrated with teachers when they don't seem prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, they should have repracticed this at home or with friends. And if you if it takes a note card where you to say, here's the order I'm doing stuff in, do it and cross stuff off. And I guess in my in my art or craft or mm -hmm. maker stuff, I'm not as I'm a planner. Mm -hmm. I before I make anything, I've actually thought about it and maybe even made it a list of notes on paper. Because when you're, you know, look at, it's stupid things. You know, you look at this thing, you better put this paper on first before you put the clock. Because otherwise trying to work behind the clock right. is impossible. It's just little things like that where, you know, you want, you, if you think it through, you're like, I should do this first and then this and then this and then this. Doesn't well, mean that makes, I think, I think the point is, um, it depends on what you're teaching. If you're outcome is project based and it's a certain project that that should come out of mm -hmm. that versus something where it's more about uh 
letting go and everyone's page for like in an art journal class for example yeah, yeah. everyone's art journal page looks different right then it doesn't that if i want to have something that is project based and uh, the same thing kind of comes out of there or it's a certain technique that's very important that mm -hmm. this looks like that right then yes i agree uh if it's more about you know, learning different ways of approaching something and then do your own stuff anyway, then it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, I agree. And a little bit, I'm going to respectfully disagree one little bit. Yeah. If my partner and I took a class that was at a, an art store. Yeah. And we were doing a, a big board and doing all kinds of mixed media on it. And we got very frustrated, and it could be our style, because it was certainly a layered project. Mm -hmm. But the, in advance, the teacher never said, how many layers or what are we doing? So we spent the whole first night covering this board with paint. And I really worked really hard to get the paint to be a certain way that I liked. When we went back the next week, she was like, now we're going to cover all that up with gesso and just leave a little piece showing and then do something else. And I was like, cover it all up? What are you talking about, honey? You never told me this. I worked so hard on this. If in the big picture she had said, now we're going to do seven layers and expose little bits each time, I think I might have felt better. But I worked so hard on the very first layer. And then you never you saw like this much of that first layer. So I totally understand what you're saying, but here's a question for you. Did you enjoy working so hard on that first layer? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's use a little magic and end the interview. There you go. <laughs> My snappers. That was working. She's still here. I think I made the cat disappear, though. I made the cat disappear. Oh, my God. Poor pretzel. I think my wand's out of alignment. That's got to be the problem. <laughs> I meant to zap you and I got the cat. I think my wand is crooked. <laughs> what do you do when your wand is bent? I don't know. You go to Joe and he fixes it. No, no, I'm just me. You know. No, I think, I think, I think it was probably my expectation. You know, when you challenged me on that, you're, you're right. It was, in my mind, I had expected a certain process. And when I didn't know it in advance, and I'm an engineer, I'm not comfortable with unknown. I like a plan. I like structure. So this was no plan. We just kept putting stuff on there, putting stuff on there. And other people in the class seemed so, you know, I remember one lady, she was doing the whole thing. And then at some point she turned and she's like, oh, it's much better upside down. I was like, oh, you can't turn <laughs> See, I think I think that is um, because you know I lo I studied law and I had to work very structured and organized. I can't yeah, be yeah. very organized if I want to, um, but this actually was very freeing for me when I explored more and more uh, mixed media because I I felt like you can you you learn also to just like go with the flow and make the best out of that. And I actually had one, uh, in, uh, I interviewed Sharon Brandon, who's part of our um, Creative Jumpstart tribe this year again. And she said, uh, she works for a bank and uh, highly analytical stuff that she does. And she said she learned from making art and uh, working with uh, mixed media, uh, also a different approach at work because sometimes it's good to not have all everything planned out and all the answers in advance. And I thought that was very interesting. No, 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 no. <laughs> Natalie, there are rules. <laughs> now, that, I don't want people to think, though, that means it comes out the way I picture it. That's not true. Sometimes <laughs> it's totally different than I picture it. Um, but you still follow the rules. Somewhat, yeah. And before I make a project, usually in my head, I've spent many nights mm. thinking about it. You know, I used to make fun of my dad. My dad was a 
didn't go to school, Italian laborer in a stone quarry and a carpenter. And he would build amazing decks and kitchens for mm. folks for side income. And he would tell me, you know, I remember going with him to see a deck he built or a house or, you know, a kitchen, things like that. And I'd say, well, how long did this take? And he would be like, oh, actual construction, we did it in two weekends. But in my mind, I built it for a month. Aww. And I never got that. And now I get that because I tend to think like, okay, what's going to go where? How am I going to attach? Because it's assemblage, I spend a lot of time thinking, how's that going to attach and be stable and not move? And, you know, how's that going to interact with another piece? Or if I'm putting light, I put lights in a lot of projects. You know, when it's like a Christmas tree, right? You have to put the lights on before you put all the ornaments. Otherwise, it's really hard. So it's like, where am I going to put the lights? And where am I going to put them so they don't interfere with other pieces that are coming on? So I, I admit I still take an engineering approach. This free spirit artist thing is very hard for me. <laughs> but I think what is so awesome about it is that we, we all have different approaches to that. And there's something for everyone. Like whatever... Yeah. Whatever, and sometimes it's also nice if you're super organized, like Joe, or you like to plan around, then you, of course, be going to be happy with his part, but also to venture into the other side. And I think what's funny is that a lot of people that are more like the free spirit people, maybe, they are, for them, doing what you do is actually out of the box for them, right? Yeah. Because they have to be like more thinking but when they learn to do it the right way like that they're, they're going to be very happy the right way yeah. <laughs> i was trying to just slide that in Natalie. <laughs> the right way you know i use my wand again but i've already made the cat disappear so I'm, i don't know what could happen next it could be your all your it furniture could be just me vanishing all of a yeah, sudden be, i have to be very careful there's a lot of power in this one i know i know that was so delightful as every year, uh, Joe. I can't wait for people to see your amazing video and all the other videos. Uh, please sign up for Creative Jumpstart 2020. Use Joe's link, which you will find on the video. And thank you, thank you so much, Joe, for being oh, part of Oh, you're welcome. Creative and you know, interact with the artists. Yes. That's the best part. But I think now I've got some chores to do. So I'm going to go use my wand and follow my plan for the day. Yes, do so. Love the rules. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, hold on, Natalie. I got to go. Don't hang up, Natalie. No. <laughs> this will be the blooper part of the show. <laughs> oh, my hat's falling apart, Natalie. There's shit falling everywhere. <laughs>